today's video where we're talking about the market analyzer as well as some tips that you can use today to increase some performance. We're going to add in some useful columns as well as we're going to make use of some conditions and organize ourselves through some tabs, templates, and labels. So we have a lot to do. Now don't forget to whack that thumbs up button if you do enjoy these videos and while you're doing that, we'll be right back after this. So depending on your machine's performance of the market analyzer, it might not be as important to look at these performance changes. I'll have to do another video on computer hardware. However, unless your computer has 64, 120 gigs of RAM, you're probably gonna wanna tweak your market analyzer performance. And we're gonna do that in three ways. Bars to load, the max bar look back, and when to calculate whether you do that per each tick, uh, every time the price changes or when the bar actually closes. Now all of these settings can be found in the column setting of the market analyzer. So we're going to right click on the market analyzer itself and go to columns. Each configured column, you will have to make these changes. So if you have 10 columns, different time frames, you're going to have to make these changes 10 times. So don't forget to save things once you're all done as a template so you don't have to redo it later. So what are these settings? Okay, bars to load. Now think of it this way, which will be a pretty basic example, but let's just say you have a 14 day moving average, okay? You easily know that on a daily chart, that's gonna be equivalent to 14 bars. So if all you're doing is having the market analyzer load in 14 bars, you don't need to load up that 256 bars of past data. When your market analyzer first starts up, it's going to take a while to update all of its data. So if you're only updating, let's just say 14 bars or what you need, it's going to happen a lot quicker. Now this will tie into the bars to look back, but if you're loading only 14 bars, then your max that you can look back is only 14 bars. That makes sense, right? So the setting wouldn't be as useful in that situation. However, if you need to load 500 bars for other data or other calculations, but on this specific column, you only need to look back 14 days in order to get like a moving average calculation, then that's when this setting might be handy to further improve that performance. Now, the last one is when to calculate. Some indicators or some tools that you might not be using doesn't need to recalculate if the price doesn't change. So the option that would make a lot more sense to you is to use uh, when price changes and not per tick. Now, if you're using NT8 for a reason where the bar has to be closed, maybe end of day stuff or, or something like that, uh, then you can pick that option. You can wait for the bar to close and then run your, your calculation. That's gonna happen a lot less often. Now, if you're using a tick chart, you might use that option when the bar closes, right? So it's not something that you need to be doing um, where you have to have it always running on each tick. If you want to reduce your calculations, you might be looking at having that on bar close or at the middle ground probably being the on price change, at least having price change before you recalculate the data. So that pretty much takes care of performance. We're going to now look at some columns that we can add. So two columns that you might find helpful, which I'll add in here and show you how they work, is the number of days until a future contract rolls over, which is important so that you know how much time you have left, right? And then we also will look at adding in a profit loss, which might be an easy way of keeping track of some details all on the same screen. Now, when we talk about conditions and using conditions, this is where the marketing analyzer gets really interesting. So we're going to look at applying some colors based off conditions and making this uh, data seem a little cleaner. So instead of writing 0, 0.00, maybe it doesn't make sense to have that there, but better to just have a dash. So let's go back into the column. So we'll select the profit loss column, go down to where it says sell conditions, and then finally hit the add, which is in there in the bottom left. So in the value of zero, then we just want to put a dash. So we'll put that in the text box above. Everything else will stay the same. Uh, next, we'll, we'll say if the amount of the profit is positive, then we'll create a green background to it. And then if it's a loss, we'll make the background red. So how do we do that? So back into the cell conditions, we're actually going to change the trigger condition to say 
greater than, and we're going to also have the background go to green. Okay, just like in, in the text box, we'll have it stay empty, which means basically replace it with the value of whatever that green value would be. So keep the text box empty, don't have a dash there or anything, and have the background set to green. Now, of course, you can go back in and change, add another uh, condition and change it to the condition with a lesser than, and then you can have your background as red, and that way if it's in the green, then you'll see a green background. If it's in the red, then you'll see it being red. So uh, very handy, at least easy to find with your eyes. Now, as far as organization goes, don't forget to save your work as you go through all this stuff. The market analyzer can be saved again by right-clicking on that chart and going down to templates and saving it there. It's a good idea to even back up your templates files uh, too in case you need to go back to something that you might have saved over top. So really handy to do that. We can also add in a few labels onto our marketing eyes or maybe splitting up uh, the Forex and the future contracts or maybe we have stocks. We can add in labels and then we can have a, a bunch of symbols below that and that might help organize us a little bit better as well. And then finally at the bottom, you can see that we could run a whole bunch of different tabs. So maybe we'll have a tab for Forex, maybe we'll have a tab for futures and then one for stocks. It will be very easy for us to actually have different tabs for different markets. Or maybe you want to have all your, your columns that are in short term time frames on one and anything that you consider to be long term in a different tab. So definitely a way to use tabs to help organize yourself a little better. Anyways, if you had learned just one thing here, we'd really appreciate any love you can give us and whack that thumbs up button. Otherwise, stay safe and we will see you guys in the next video.